get to experience what it's like to be up close and personal with these amazing animals. Um, Gen Farm was started 13 years ago in Tarzana and it actually started with um, a half acre and Ellie, our founder, had um, gone to this petting zoo and she saw it from the side of the road and she decided to stop in and when she got there she saw that there was no food or water on the property for the animals. Um, the public was basically allowed to do whatever they wanted with the animals. They were picking up the animals and dropping them and you know carrying the babies around and doing whatever they wanted and the ponies were being beaten to carry kids around. It was really terrible. So she decided she, got, she needed to get herself out of there as soon as possible. And on the way out, she saw this little goat um, who had a big, pussy, bloody tumor, and she couldn't walk. If you don't trim goat's feet every two months, they get like twisted and ingrown, and the, the animal develops arthritis, and she can't walk. And so this uh, goat's feet were over a foot long. And she couldn't walk at all, and she had all these deformations. And um, Ellie decided she couldn't leave her there. And so she went up to the woman and um, asked if she could take the goat. And the woman was like, get off my property, you know, get away. And so she was like, okay. And she came back every day for 13 days and uh, sat with Mary, the goat, and until the lady was finally like, get the goat and get off my property. And so she took her home and she gave her the vet care she needed. She gave her all the supplements she needed to be healthy. And then she um, took a picture of Mary, all recovered, back to the petting zoo and the woman um, started pulling dead and dying animals out from the back of her facility and said, just take them. And that's how the Gentle Martin started. And um, that was a half acre in Tarzana. We are now six acres. We have two properties. Um, and we have over 170 animals now. Um, all of our animals have been rescued from abuse and neglect. We are a last resort animal sanctuary, which means these animals only come to us after they can't find another home. So either their bodies are too broken, their hearts are too broken, they've, got, they've come through some kind of abuse or neglect where they can't find another home and they're facing death. And so we take them in and we give them a forever home. And then we use them once they're healed and happy to um, work with inner city kids. We bring kids in from on probation camps um, who are in the foster system and they come and they learn from our animals because a lot of our animals have the same stories as these kids and they will um, talk to the animals and interact with them and they learn that there's light at the end of the tunnel because this animal made it through what I'm going through. Hi. This is Buttercup. Buttercup's hey, Buttercup. super friendly and you guys are welcome to come over and pet her. Hi. She loves to give kisses and so she might try to lick you. Thank you. She's a very sweet girl. And remember she likes to be pet yes. under the... Yes, she loves to scratch under hey, her Buttercup. neck. That's her favorite spot. I'm so familiar with cats with spots. Yeah. Really? So when I see something like this, yeah, I wouldn't even know it's a cow. Yeah, these guys are all different breeds. Um, Look at her beautiful Buttercup eyes. is a Jersey. So yeah, that's she, very deep. Um, she's a different type of cow, and that's why she looks so different. Is she the one that's blind? No. We're going to go around the corner. Faith is you guys want to pet her? Vegan yeah. is a blind. Nervous. Color. She's very pretty. Look at her eyelashes. I'm jealous. I didn't They're know they so were so big. Okay. Buttercup was rescued from a backyard butcher. Um, we recently shut this guy down, and uh, we've been we discovered him four years ago when um, the neighbors were hearing something going wrong there. And so we went there to actually rescue turkeys from Thanksgiving, and it was basically pick your animal and we'll slaughter it for you. And when we saw what was going on there, we went there, and they ha he had a bunch of cows. Um, some of them were pregnant. They had no food, water, shelter. He didn't believe in feeding them hay because it was too expensive. Um, he was actually feeding them rotten fruits and vegetables, and the cows were um, only eating um, moldy breads and pumpkins that they had to break open themselves. And it was basically like he was getting trash from different places and giving them to the animals. Mm -hmm. And so um, we took all his cows. We have been we tried we've been trying to shut him down for four years, and we actually succeeded uh, earlier last year. And we, a lot of, as we go through, you'll notice a lot of our animals are from them. Um, but she was pregnant when she came in. And she, um, she was about, cows gestate for about 10 months. She was nine months pregnant. Um, she was emaciated. Um, obviously, she wasn't given anything she needed um, during her pregnancy. And we tried our best to get her super healthy before her baby was born. But her baby was born really, really sick. 
uh, his name was Halo, and he, when cows get sick, it's usually their lungs they have problems with, and um, he had pneumonia for a long time, and he lived to be seven months, and he had his fires come through here, and his lungs couldn't handle it, and he passed away. Um, she mourned for her baby, like any mother would, um, but she um, decided to adopt all of our new babies. Around that time, we rescued Faith, who we're gonna meet, and a lot of other veal calves, and they came in at eight weeks old, and they were all sick and dying, and um, we were doing our best to you know, give them a reason to live, and she decided to adopt them. And so she nursed some of them, and she kept them all safe and happy, and those cows are all super friendly because of Buttercup. Um, so she's our circuit. Um, she was actually a veal calf, so she came from a dairy. Um, and I'll elaborate a little bit more on that, but come in and meet her and pick her. She's really, really soft and friendly, and and she's a baby. She's only three years old. She wants more food. She's like, give me food. Hi, baby. Aww. Hi. She wants food. Here, let's see if I can get it. Here. You want it? No? You don't want it? She was, uh, ba she was born in a dairy. Um, what a lot of people don't know is a dairy cow has to have a baby to give milk. Just like any other mammal, they give milk for their baby. Obviously, the dairy doesn't want the babies to steal the milk, so they keep them pregnant constantly. They can kind of manipulate them to give milk for about 18 months, but then they have to re-impregnate them. And so they don't want the baby, so they, they've created veal. So they're not losing money on, on killing babies and selling them or, or just throwing them away or whatever. So they've created veal, and that's basically a baby dairy cow. And they're put in a crate with no windows, and they're chained by their neck or stomped on their back so they can't move and build muscle. And they live like that for eight weeks. They're not given any food high in protein or high in iron. And so they're often very, very sick. They're not given any vet care because they're not supposed to live past eight weeks. And then they send them to slaughter. And that's where veal comes from. Um, we periodically will raise money and go to an auction and buy as many veal calves as possible. Um, she was part of our very first veal calf rescue, and she came to us blind. She went blind inside her she had um, a pink eye, and it wasn't treated. And it took her skin. He's lining up. <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> soon, soon. Well, go, just knock yourselves out. Feed you, you, you some damn carrots. It feels like big lips. <laughs> big lips just grabbing your <laughs> It's like kissing your hand okay. or your palm. Oh. Here. Hey, buddy. Oh. Are you sure? There's no way that they can get to your hand okay. in any way. Oh. They're just not built that way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is that weird? Okay, I'm so spoiling you. So the only one we have to worry about there is... You go. I have a stage one for you. Walking over to us. Uh, um, her name is Blister, and she tends to be a little mouse. And her makeup artist hey, came out here and had a tour, and then she was like, "You have to come out." And so she brought <laughs> a crew, and they filled their. <laughs> He's <laughs> so getting all the and little pieces. Yeah. It's like and he still kind of tastes like carrots. Been on the show. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really good. It's really, 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 really grateful to her. She comes out. She sponsors two of our cows, and. Um, they name a lot of our yeah, and then we'll bring everyone together. Excuse me, Sam. And again, this is Francis. He doesn't like to be touched. This is Marsha. Hi. Aren't you beautiful? Hi. Are you showing up? Yes. I didn't know turkey Hi. Oh, he's licking me. Oh. So meal time to be oh, you want to eat it? Um, yeah, uh, always looking to attract a mate. So all of his Look at him showing up. Snood, all of the way his head looks, all the bumps all over this his head. This is not food. The way he collects up this and is curves, not his, food. His, his uh, feathers, it's his fan, like that's all to attract a mate. And he's trying to attract Marsha. That's Marshall. true, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. She's a, she's a, uh, an older <laughs> turkey, and he's a very young turkey. And so, so he always tries to court her. Yes. And well, all of the females that we have, he tries to court all of them. And just a heart failure. And, uh, I remember they were eating. They like this stuff. Had, yeah, they like this. The she used to be really, really friendly, and she's not. 
too friendly anymore. Oh. But you guys, yeah, you guys are welcome yeah. to pull down some pepper tree. They love it. It's, it's oh, look, look, hey, hey. over. This is our baby goat named Braveheart. Um, hey, Braveheart. And then behind you is Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Yeah, it's Pepper. Oh. Take it easy. Don't bite me. He's so funny. And he's really, 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 really nice guy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. That's not funny. Oh, the church area. Yeah. Does it smell That's, good? Um, uh, the one with the brown hey. one is a hair sheep, which means that she blues and wool sheep is the other white one, and then the brown one there. Uh, these guys are hair sheep, which means that they don't grow wool like Stanley does. They will actually shed their wool naturally, mm -hmm. so they don't need to be sheared. Um, she was actually a, a pet. She was someone's pet, and she was raised as a dog. Um, she lived in their house. She watched TV with them. Oh like She was gosh. a part of their family. That's awesome. And then the neighbors started to complain about her and um, they set her here, but then the thing is that they never came to visit her. Aww. And so she became very depressed. Separation she still anxiety, does, yeah. yeah. She still does go through really deep depressions. We call her our Eeyore, because she'll kind of stay off to the edge and she doesn't really want to be interacting with anybody, but she's doing really, really well. Um, and we always want to make sure to give her a little oh extra love. That's our peacock. His name is Jewel. Wow. Hi, Daisy. Um, not accurate. Hi, baby girl. Um, that was from Thanksgiving. We had Hi, baby a, girl. Uh, Turkey, who is you are always around me. Right you are so cute. <laughs> she really likes my bracelet. <laughs> and we had to make sure are you funny? In there and they will live 30 years. Um, they can roost. You are so the, funny. The trees, they can make nice I know. Um, You're just curious. Doesn't this feel like being a like Babe or Charlotte's Web? Exactly, like totally. Yeah. <laughs> so. These pigs, this is Linus, this is Snoopy. Watch Snoopy. Snoopy likes to bite feet. Oh. <laughs> um, so if she gets too close to you, just kind of back away. Hey, Snoopy. Um, this is Truffles. Hi, Truffles. Yeah, great name. She's really nice. Most of our pot bellies are really, really friendly, except for Snoopy. Snoopy came from a hoarder, and she's had a tough past. Aww. But she's doing better, huh, Snoops? Right? I don't have any food for you. <laughs> she's so funny. Yeah, she's really cute. She's actually what a pot belly should look like. The long nose Aww. is because she's purebred. The scrunch nose, like Linus has, that's inbreeding. So if you guys want, we can feed the llama. Hey. Um, if you want to come grab like a handful of the feed, we can give it to him. That's actually what he's waiting for. Hey guys. And then um, a couple cuddling. months ago, she decided she wanted to live up here. So they're so cute, they're cuddling. Yeah, uh, so we're very happy. She's she's coming around, and she lets more and more volunteers pet her every day, and uh, we're really working with her. Your but she still open. has a habit to bite feet. Lord King. But all the other pot bellies are really cute. So Portia came to us. She was rescued three. She's yes, yeah. she was rescued three Thanksgivings ago. Hi, um and she, there's a woman who her tradition is she goes to a slaughterhouse and she buys turkeys by the pound and asks them not to slaughter them and she takes them home. And that's her Thanksgiving tradition and she'll wash them up and um, they love baths, turkeys love baths, so she gives them a big bath and she blow dries them and makes sure they're all clean and then she'll bring them to us. And so we have a few turkeys from her. Uh, Portia was rescued about three Thanksgivings ago, I think maybe even four Thanksgivings ago. Um, unfortunately with domestic turkeys is they get so big that their legs sometimes give out. We've had, they have certain problems because they're genetically engineered to get as big as they can yeah. as quickly as possible. Their legs can't support it. Exactly, it so she, mm, it, it, cool. it doesn't matter how we feed them, it doesn't matter, you know, the amount that we feed them, if their body's just gonna retain the fat. And so, uh, our turkeys aren't allowed to free feed like the chickens are, they're given a certain amount in the morning and night. She uh, was the same way and she, uh, can't walk anymore. Her legs gave out and they dislocated. Yeah. And so our vet said, you know, she's not going to have too much quality of life. She, you know, we'll give her two months and then she'll probably, her organs will start shutting down. Yeah. That was a year ago. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, she's doing really, really well. Um, she's one of our only turkeys that still lay eggs, which wow. shows that the rest of her body is working very well, the rest of her organs. Um, she now gets everything she needs brought to her. Our volunteers come up every hour, they clean her up, they give her water. In the evening she gets a meal, in the morning she gets a meal, and she gets everything she needs in here. And then she, we made her a throne, because she's our queen. Aww. So.